Mr. Speaker, I beg to move the following motion standing in my name. Whereas under section 1091A of the value added tax, cap 15.4 to the act, it is provided that the Minister of Finance may, by order published in the Gazette, amend the schedules to the act. And whereas it is further provided that under section 1092 of the act, that an order made pursuant to section 1091 of the act is subject to an affirmative resolution of parliament except where the amendment is to the customs tariff headings only. And whereas the Minister of Finance seeks approval of the draft value added tax amendment of schedules one and three order to amend schedule one and schedule three of the act by an affirmative resolution of parliament to include in the case of Schedule 1, as zero rated goods for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, a supply of goods under the following customs tariff headings. A, 44.07 to 44.12, lumber. All articles inclusive and their related subheadings. B. 25.23. Cement. Specified articles and related subheadings. C. 72.00 to 72.09. Galvanized. 73.00 to 73.08. Galvanized. Another type of galvanized. 73.12 to 73.18, 76.00 to 76.10, 76.16, and related subheadings. 73.06 to 73.14, steel of all articles. 72.14, and related subheadings. And 72.08, and related subheadings. E. 44.11 to 44.18, plywood, all articles. 44.20 to 44.21, F, 96.19, sanitary, nap sanitary towels, pads, and tampons, napkins, napkins and similar articles of any materials. Two, for a period of two years, commencing from 2nd day of August 2023 and ending on 1st day of August 2025. A supply of components of photovoltaic systems intended solely for harnessing solar power under the following customs tariff. A. 8502.39, complete system. B. 8541.40, solar panels. C. 8504.4 not charge controllers and inverters. D, 8536.7 not MC4 connectors. E, 7610 to 1990 solar panel mounts. 8536.5 not cables, insular switches. 8537.1 not combiner boxes. 8544.601 not direct current DC alternative current AC cables 8507.8 not 8507.6 not deep cycle batteries J 8536.9 not battery clamps K 9032.8900 control devices other DC AC components L, 8537.1000, combiners. M, 8536.9000, junction boxes. 9, 8536.5000, insulators. O, 8536.300, protective devices, <coughs> communication <laughs> devices. 8471. 9000 data cloggers 9032 to 8900 control components 8517 
to 6900 communication cabling ethernet switches. Three, for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, a supply of the installation service for photovoltaic system. B, in the case of Schedule 3, as an exempt import for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, the purchase or lease of an aircraft for local or regional travel. Two, vehicles building construction materials, machinery, plant and equipment by approved contractors, subcontractors and consultants for the Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project. Three, vehicles building and construction materials, machinery, plant and equipment by approved contractors and subcontractors and consultants for St. Jude Hospital Reconstruction Project, including medical equipment and supplies. Be it resolved that the Parliament, by affirmative resolution, approves the draft value added tax, amendment of schedules one and three order, which amends schedule one and schedule three of the act to include, in the case of schedule one, as zero rated goods for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, a supply of goods under the following custom tariff headings. 4407, to 4412, lumber, all articles inclusive and their related subheadings. <coughs> B, 25.23, cement, specified articles and related subheadings. C, 7200, 7209, galvanized, 7300 to 7308, 7312 to 73.18, 76.00 to 76.10, 76. 0.16 and related subheadings. D, 73.06 to 73.14. Steel, all articles. 7214 and related subheadings. And 72.08 and related subheadings. E, 44.11 to 44.18. Plywood, all articles. 44.2 not to 44.21. 96.19. Sanitary towels, napkins, and tampons, napkins, and similar articles of any materials. Two, for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, a supply of components for photovoltaic systems intended solely for harnessing solar power under the following customs tariff headings 85.02. 0.39 complete system 85.41.4 not solar panels 85.04.4 not charge controllers and inverter and inverters 8536.7 not mc4 connectors 761 not 0.9090 solar panel mounts Eight five three six point five zero. Cable insulator switches, 8537.1 knot. Combiner boxes, 8544.601 knot. Direct cable, DC, alternate current, AC cables, 85.8 knot to 85 knot 7.8 knot, 85 knot 7.6 knot. Deep cycle batteries, 8536.9 knot. Battery clamps. 9032.8900 control devices, other DC and AC components, 8537.100 combiners, 8536.900 junction boxes, 8536.500 insulators, 8536.3000 protective devices, communication devices, 8471.9000. D, detail loggers, 9032.8900, control components, 8517.6900, communicating Ethernet switches. For a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, a supply 
of the installation service of photovoltaic systems. In the case of Schedule 3, as an exempt import for a period of two years, commencing from the second day of August 2023 and ending on the first day of August 2025, the purchase or lease of, of an aircraft for local and regional travel. Two, the import of vehicles, buildings and construction materials, machinery, plant and equipment by approved contractors, subcontractors and consultants for the Caribbean Regional Air Transport Connectivity Project. And three, vehicles, building and construction materials, machinery, plant and equipment by approved contractors subcontractors and consultants for the St. Jude Hospital reconstruction project, including medical equipment and supplies. Mr. Speaker, this is another of the promises that we made to the public of St. Lucia in my budget of the 24th of April, Mr. Speaker. Where we promised, Mr. Speaker, that we would incentivize the construction industry in St. Lucia. We promised the public of St. Lucia that we would give the young people, we would give the people who have been longing to build their houses, or we will give people who have been longing to make improvements in the house, Mr. Speaker, we would give them a break, Mr. Speaker. What this resolution means, Mr. Speaker, is from the 2nd of August, that of 12.5% will not be payable on building materials like, like lumber, all types of lumber, Mr. Speaker, steel, all types of steel, galvanized and, and cement, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, if you know a, a little about construction, you would know, Mr. Speaker, that the bulk of costs in the beginning in construction is on steel, cement, and lumber, Mr. Speaker. Plus the fact that the cost of, of blocks, of concrete blocks, should decrease because, con because cement, that's a major component of concrete blocks, the price of cement will be decreased, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, what, what, what this means is that the VAT and I think I brought Mr. Speaker an invoice <coughs> somewhere for you to see, Mr. Speaker, that if the cost of materials that you build, that you buy to build your house, cement, lumber, steel, and plywood, Mr. Speaker, if the total comes to $2,000, Mr. Speaker, the total before 2nd of August, you would have to pay an addition 12.5% on the $2,000, on the total price of the goods. You'd have to pay an additional 12.5% this figure. But with the removal of that, when you get your invoice, that 12.5% will not be there and you will not be required to pay that 12 and a half percent, Mr. Speaker. This means that even if, even if the cost of these imported goods increase, in the final analysis, you ought to pay 12 and a half percent less than you would have paid previously before we remove the VAT on these items, Mr. Speaker. I mean, Mr. Speaker, that is a very significant point to make, and that is a point I want the public of St. Lucia to understand, because the prophets of doom and gloom and lies and, and, and untruths, Mr. Speaker, will try to peddle it differently and make the point again. Even if the cost of these goods increase, even if they increase, at the end of the day, before August the 2nd, you have had to pay 12.5% more. With the removal of VAT, with the zero rating on VAT, you have to pay 12 and a, you will not have to pay 12.5%. So you'll make a savings of 12.5% 
even if the price increases. So, Mr. Speaker, I hope, I really, really hope, Mr. Speaker, that businesses work with us, Mr. Speaker. We have shown goodwill. We are going to increase the tax amnesty. We're going to increase the time period for the tax amnesty. We'll, we've reduced interest on VAT, Mr. Speaker. We've said to you, if you owe us tax, we waive all the interest and the penalties for the tax that you owe us, Mr. Speaker. We are showing, Mr. Speaker, I can say, without fear or favor, that this government of the Party has been the best government for business for a long time. So all the talk, all the talk here about this government is a government that taxes. You know, we, Mr. Speaker, we understand the private sector. We give the most generous incentives to the private sector. We passed the Tourism Incentives Act that gave generous concessions to the private sector. And I've been told by the minister that we are going to, we are going to look into a mega business act to further incentivize, Mr. Speaker, businesses in St. Lucia that make a large investment. Today, you heard the Minister for Commerce tell, tell about the medium and small, micro and small business grants of $10 million, first time in the history of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker. You heard about the youth economy and the Caribbean Development Bank has just given us the go-ahead. They're going to be investing by means of loans, $6 million in the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. And colleagues from all over the region are coming to look at what we're doing in the youth economy, Mr. Speaker. This government has worked in the private sector, and this government, I can say without fear or favor, we never ask any businessman what's in it for me under the table. And in our discussions, in our discussions with investors, Mr. Speaker, they tell the stories. They tell the stories, but you know, but you know, Mr. Speaker, time will tell. Time will tell. Because right now, Mr. Speaker, we think, we think they think they have a new lease of life. So they're like, talking, yeah, social media, talking, political meeting, this and that, demonstration, Caroline, come to the house. What kind of noise, Mr. Speaker? But time will tell. And Mr. Speaker, I have warned them. I have warned them. And they do it again all the time. They underestimate the capacity of the St. Lucia Labour Party. They underestimate our resolve, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, I'll tell you a story about the cabinet yesterday, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yesterday I felt proud to be a member of the St. Lucia Labour Party, Mr. Speaker. Very proud. You know why, Mr. Speaker? I saw the men and women in the cabinet spend more than two hours discussing an incentive for small contractors, Mr. Speaker. People that would have been normally disregarded. People that would be called, but remember, you remember the, the, the statement, Mr. Speaker? What's the track record? Who is she? Remember the statement? Who is she? Where is the track record? What has she done? She's a non entity. Remember that statement, Mr. Speaker? But we, we spend hours discussing how we can help non entities. And that is the philosophical difference between the St. Lucia Labour Party and the other party in St. Lucia. And we are proud of that philosophical difference. We are very proud of it. Although some people who ought to know better, who ought to have that same philosophical underpinning that would guide their direction in life, Mr. Speaker. But because they suffer from so much self-hate, because they suffer from so much self-hate, because they suffer from the fact that people like them are now the makers and movers in the political life of St. Lucia, Mr. Speaker, they, they prefer to spew out all kinds of anger and all kinds of hatred, Mr. Speaker, because they refuse to accept 
They refuse that technical speaker to give people like them time and a means to run this country, Mr. Speaker. But, Mr. Speaker, we are not going to be, we are not going to be deterred, Mr. Speaker. I, I will not be deterred. You know why I will not be deterred, Mr. Speaker? Because I have a vision for St. Lucia, where every man and woman, particularly those who are most vulnerable, have an equal opportunity to achieve in this country, Mr. Speaker. And that is why, Mr. Speaker, and that is why, that is why, they will not understand why this government is removing VAT on a simple item. You will hear the naysayers and the prophets of doom and the, and the, the barons of misinformation. You will hear them make a joke of it, Mr. Speaker. But it's a simple in a significant step on the 96.19, Mr. Speaker, sanitary towels and napkins and similar articles of any materials, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, those who do not know it will not feel it because they don't care. They don't care because they've never felt it. But go to parts of my constituency. Go to parts of Castry South or Castry North or even Ansari Canaries, Mr. Speaker. Go to these parts and you'll hear about something called period poverty. And, um, and Mr. Speaker, you know, these are the things that are significant, Mr. Speaker. These are the things that are significant. So what we're doing, Mr. Speaker, there are many single mothers, not single mothers who will be castigated, not single mothers who will be suicided, who single mothers who are castigated, who were castigated by the leader of the opposition, who will call all kind of names, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Single mothers who want to bring up their children in a respectable way, Mr. Speaker. And they have to make a choice, Mr. Speaker. A choice. At certain times of the month of whether they must buy food for their children or they must buy sanitary napkins. That is the reality of life for many people in this country. But you know what, Mr. Speaker? Because of selfishness, because of a sense of entitlement, because of a feeling that it must be them or nobody else, because they believe they have a God-given right to run this country, <clears throat> they will lie and they will try to confuse the people of solution with Mr. Speaker as far as that's concerned. So, Mr. Speaker, this resolution <clears throat> will, in a holistic fashion, help people to look for the shelter, Mr. Speaker. And there's a thing in sociology called the hierarchy of wants, Mr. Speaker or needs, the hierarchy of needs, Mr. Speaker, but Maslow, Maslow hierarchy of needs, Mr. Speaker. And there, he spoke about the need for food, shelter, and clothing, Mr. Speaker. And in one, one swipe, we're trying to deal with all of them, Mr. Speaker, one swipe. So, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this removal of VAT on bill materials, it's not because we want to people going to eat plywood. It's not because of that. And these are the kind of things that people promote on the radio, eat plywood. You know what, Mr. Speaker? It will help a single mother who wants to stop the gas the leak on her house. It will help her to pay 12.5% less for two sheets of galvanizing, Mr. Speaker. That's what it will do. It will help the teacher and the policeman who want to put an extension on their home because their family is growing. It will help them to buy their cement cheaper. It will help them to buy their steel cheaper, Mr. Speaker. It will help them to buy their plywood speaker cheaper. It will help them to buy their galvanized cheaper. That's what this does, Mr. Speaker. That's what it does. That's what it does. What it does, Mr. Speaker, is it says to the man and woman in this country that the government is assisting you. 
The government is assisting you to be a man and to be a woman, Mr. Speaker. To have a share, to have a stake in your own destiny, Mr. Speaker. That is what the simple resolution is saying, Mr. Speaker. That's what it's saying. And it also is saying that if you want to build a hotel or you want to build a factory, whilst you wait for the other incentives, Mr. Speaker, you can begin because you have to pay 12.5% less on the construction materials needed to start up that business, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, this is significant. It's a major step in the economic and social evolution of this country. Major. Major step, Mr. Speaker. Major. And, Mr. Speaker, why is we doing that? We also seen about the infrastructure. We also about the Mr. Speaker, because we are saying that there is a project for the resurfacing, or a World Bank project for the resurfacing of the Yonora Airport. And Mr. Speaker, we'll come to the Parliament very shortly with a full disclosure on the Yonora Airport, Mr. Speaker. But there's a project for the resurfacing of the Yonora Airport, a World Bank project, so we are giving them, uh, we are removing VAT on the imports, Mr. Speaker. Uh, but more importantly, uh, Mr. Speaker, Why would somebody deliberately spread that work on St. Jude has stopped? Why? Why would somebody, in the good sense, Mr. Speaker, because you have lost an election, mon Dieu, où j'ai perd? Où ça fait sauver? Où j'ai perd? Why? Why would somebody spread misinformation that work on St. Jude has stopped? And a contractor whom they vilified, now they support them because he say he takes his equipment and he, go, he goes. A contractor they vilified, you know. And that's a, that's a sad thing with, 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 with the opposition. One day they're on this corner, next day on the other corner. One day somebody good, another the, 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 the person turns bad. Once the person speaks the truth, the person turns bad. So, Mr. Speaker, I want to assure the public, I want to assure the public that I feel better now about St. Jude than I ever felt before. I feel better now about St. Jude than I ever felt before. You know why, Mr. Speaker? Because I see the end in the horizon. I see the day. I see the day, Mr. Speaker, when we will, will say to the patients and the staff of St. Jude, we apologize for what you went through from since 2011, and we usher you into pride, new premises so you can continue your service to the people of St. Lucia. And that is going to be a wonderful day, Mr. Speaker. So regardless of what they tried, Mr. Speaker, you want to, you want to believe that this, gov this opposition is trying to push a contractor to have an injunction to stop work on St. Jude because they say the, they say the contractor didn't pay the subcontractor? That's where these guys have reached, you know, Mr. Speaker. That's where these guys are. And they posture on television and radio pretending. Like I heard, I heard one of them talking about crime and the Minister of Home Affairs and National Security should resign, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there are all kinds of crimes that have been committed in this country that go unresolved, including kidnapping. All kinds of crimes. So, Mr. Speaker, when they want to throw stones, tell them those who live in glass houses should never throw stones. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, 
they have taken our silence for weakness. They have taken our silence for believing that we can roll over and die. Mr. Speaker, you know why we have not been dealing with, dealing with that nonsense that goes for position? Because we are busy running the country. But if they believe, if they believe that they can continue their falsehoods and their propaganda and rely on them, Mr. Speaker, I tell them they have another thing going. Because everything they say, everything they attack the government for, they have done worse. And when we begin to debate the health and security level, I will prove to you, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I'm very happy to be associated with this revolution today, Mr. Speaker. Very happy. I feel buoyed. I feel encouraged, Mr. Speaker. And what's most important, Mr. Speaker, is the people understand what this government is doing. The people understand it. So when they try to have demonstrations and they make a lot of fuss, I mean, Mr. Speaker, you know, Mr. Speaker, desperation is a real serious thing, you know. When you, when you see yourself from desperation, especially when you lose power, and you don't want to sit down with group and, and you get desperate. You cling on all kinds of things. There was a big story. Philip J. Pierre attacked elderly people and tell, I mean, a big, big story. I mean, a big story. I must apologize to elderly people, Mr. Speaker, because they say I said something about elderly people. All I was saying is that you should not take advantage on elderly people, Mr. Speaker, by bringing them on the streets when you know very well you bring them for no cause. That's all I said. And I stand by that. That's right. That's, right. <coughs> That's all I said, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, they attacked, they attacked St. Lucia going to a referendum. And I'm glad the minister member was not there. I applaud him for that. He could not put in his good conscience, a progressive man like that could not help himself to be a part of people who, uh, but of course, Mr. Speaker, he didn't disassociate himself with colonization, had a conscience. He did not. But let him pass for that. And Mr. Speaker, the demonstration for the CCJ failed. They planned a big demonstration today for the health and security level. A big demonstration, Mr. Speaker. Why is it? Instead of staying here and defend this cause, he ran away. Same thing as usual. Then, next day he'll come and go on his favorite radio program and ta 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 nonsense. Come here, sit down, and debate the health and security level. Come and, and debate it. Come and debate the, the, the VATCA. Come and defend. Come and defend this, 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 this thing. Come and defend it, Mr. Speaker. Come and defend the open letter to the Prime Minister. Mr. Speaker, when the debate comes, I'm going to deal with that letter line for line. And I will tell you, the basic student of economics would be ashamed of the writer of this letter. Because the contents of this letter do not stand up to any tenants of regular economics or anything. It's just a whole lot of envy, a whole lot of misinformation, a whole lot of refusal to accept that the people of St. Lucia have taken a decision. And when you say that, Mr. Speaker, they tell you, oh, you're only attacking this. Nobody sees the calumny. Nobody sees the disrespect. Nobody sees the lies. Nobody sees the alignment. Nobody sees what they do to us every day. But anytime we respond, oh, you this and that. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I urge members, Mr. Speaker, to look at the VAT. We are removing the VAT on all the components and the subcontinents, Mr. Speaker, on the photovoltaic systems, which are 
systems that will cause us to convert solar power into power that will cause us not to have to use electricity or fossil fuels in the same manner as we, we would without that, that means. Again, another revolutionary step, Mr. Speaker. Because something, Mr. Speaker, I'm sure is very close to the Ministry of Education, the issue of climate change, Mr. Speaker, and the issue of how we have to keep the world to the 1.5 degree centigrade, Mr. Speaker. We have already passed that. It has already been said that we will not meet the 1.5%, Mr. Speaker. And the serious things we have to discuss, like climate change, like the, in fact, like the way rainfall, the kinds of, of weather, where there is, no, there is no sequence in weather, there is no dry season or there is no wet season. Rain falls at some point, then there is a drought, then in one day you have hot, the sun is very hot, then rain falls in the afternoon. The climate change, Mr. Speaker, the effects of climate change, the mitigation and the adoption methods that the adaptation methods we have to take for climate change. That is nowhere in, in the debate. That's nowhere in the debate, Mr. Speaker. But we have to deal with that. We have to discuss disaster clauses when we go to negotiate for loans. We have to negotiate that, Mr. Speaker. We have to negotiate. These are the issues we have to deliver as a government and issues we have to deliver a country. Not nonsense. These are the issues, and these are the issues I want the opposition to come and discuss. How do we mitigate and adapt against climate change? How do we do that? How do we sit and decide that this, the government must take steps to cause us to take steps as that, like, that will help make our agriculture sustainable after weather events? And you saw what the Minister of Agriculture said, Mr. Speaker, a little rain event, over 70% of our banana crop got wiped out, Mr. Speaker. These are the issues. That's what you want to discuss. And these are the issues that a government on opposition that is serious. These are the issues that they discuss. And these are the issues that we want to engage them in, Mr. Speaker. Because these are serious issues. But instead, nothing is said about that. Nothing, Mr. Speaker, except the normal gossip and misinformation, Mr. Speaker. People get up in the morning wishing that something will, will go bad in St. Lucia. They get up in the morning and they pray, what's going to go bad in St. Lucia? How will I attack Philip Jepia today? How will I attack Ernest Hiller today? How will I attack Richard Fredericks today? Go, get up in the morning and they dream for that to happen. They actually decide that they sit down and they'll make a lie. They will create a lie on Philip J.P. today. Just sit down and a friend of mine say, construct a lie, Mr. Speaker. That's what they do in self dealing with the important issues, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, but we're not going to be moved. We're going to stay the course, Mr. Speaker. And I ask members to join me in supporting that resolution. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.